Why does one of the world's largest airlines insist on keeping alive an aircraft that its own manufacturer has already retired? In 2019, Airbus made an announcement that echoed through airports worldwide. The A380, the largest passenger aircraft ever built, had its days numbered. Production would be discontinued. The giant of the skies, with its double-decker design and capacity for 850 passengers, had become a dinosaur in an era that called for velociraptors, smaller, more agile and efficient aircraft like the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350. It was the end of an era. Or at least it should have been. The A380 was born in an age when bigger was better. Its four Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines generated a roar that announced its arrival from miles away. It was a flying palace, suites with double beds, onboard showers, bars on the upper deck. More than a means of transportation, it was flying excess abundance. But economic reality is a relentless force. The A380 consumed fuel like a hungry teenager devours pizza, a lot and constantly. Its four engines, impressive on paper, were terribly inefficient compared to new generation twin engines. Worse yet, few airports were prepared to receive it. The A380 needed longer runways, special gates, and control towers that could see over its double fuselage. It was like having a luxury yacht when most ports only had slips for speedboats. Airlines began doing the math. To make an A380 profitable, you needed to keep it packed, not 70% or 80% occupied, but practically full all the time. On less busy routes, it became a white elephant in the sky. The math was cruel. A Boeing 787 with 300 seats fully loaded generated more money than an A380 with 500 seats half empty. Then came 2020, and the pandemic was the final blow. Borders closed, people stopped traveling, and A380s were the first to be retired. It was as if the entire world had decided that the future of aviation had no room for giants. Emirates, Singaporean Airlines, Air France, one by one the major carriers sent their A380s to the aircraft graveyard in the desert. It was a melancholy spectacle. Rows of super jumbos parked under the scorching sun, their windows covered, awaiting an uncertain fate. But in the midst of this aeronautical apocalypse, one airline did something unexpected. Emirates didn't just refuse to give up on the A380, it doubled down. While other companies rushed to get rid of the giants, Emirates was secretly planning their resurrection. Why? The answer isn't just in the numbers on a financial spreadsheet. It lies in geography, geopolitics, and perhaps a touch of strategic stubbornness that transformed Dubai into what it is today. Dubai isn't just a city. It's a global-scale experiment, a place where desert meets sea, where skyscrapers sprout from sand like mirages that became reality. And at the center of this architectural ambition sits Dubai International Airport, designed not just to serve a city, but to connect the entire world. Emirates understood something that other companies didn't realize. The A380 wasn't just an airplane, it was a geopolitical tool. Emirates didn't see the A380 as a problem to be solved, it saw it as an opportunity to be maximized. While other companies fought against the Super Jumbo's limitations, Emirates built its entire strategy around them. It was as if everyone was complaining that elephants were too big and someone decided to build a circus specifically for elephants. The secret lay in the hub and spoke business model. Dubai became the mandatory stopover between Europe and Asia, between the Americas and Oceania. The A380 didn't need to fly short domestic routes, it did what it was designed to do, transport crowds on long intercontinental flights. In 2008, when it received its first A380, Emirates had already built Terminal 3 at Dubai Airport specifically for the Super Jumbo. At 1.7 million square meters, it was larger than many airports around the world. The strategy worked remarkably well. 
While other companies struggled to fill their A380s, Emirates maintained consistently high occupancy rates. The secret? Don't compete on domestic routes, but dominate intercontinental connections. Then came 2020, and the aviation world turned upside down. Most companies saw the crisis as the final nail in the A380's coffin. Emirates? It saw a liquidation opportunity. While other companies disposed of their super jumbos, Emirates sent them to strategic storage, not for retirement, but for hibernation. And when the world began to open up again, something surprising happened. Emirates didn't just bring their A380s back, it reinvented them. The aircraft returned with retrofits that transformed each super jumbo into a luxury spaceship. New premium economy cabins, even more spacious suites, cutting-edge technology in every seat. It was a complete and surprising transformation that left many airlines wondering, what does Emirates know that we don't? But the real masterstroke came with rumors of the A380neo, an unofficial, modernized version of the Super Jumbo that Airbus itself had declared dead. The concept was brilliant in its simplicity. Why build new aircraft when you can transform existing ones into more efficient machines? Emirates began exploring retrofits with new generation engines, lighter systems, sustainable fuels, essentially resurrecting the A380 with 21st century technology. It wasn't officially an Airbus project, but Emirates' pressure was undeniable. When your biggest customer for a specific model asks for improvements, you listen, especially when that customer is known for placing orders for hundreds of aircraft at a time. Emirates' stubbornness wasn't just business, it was geopolitical. The A380 became a symbol of Dubai, just as the Eiffel Tower represents Paris or the Statue of Liberty represents New York. Giving up on the Super Jumbo would be like admitting that the vision of transforming Dubai into the center of the world had failed. And it worked. Today, while other companies' A380s rust in the desert, Emirates Super Jumbos cross the skies with the red, white, and green colors of the United Arab Emirates, a flying reminder that sometimes strategic stubbornness can defeat conventional economic logic. Emirates proved that a single determined customer can change the fate of an entire aircraft. The world said goodbye to the A380. Emirates said, not so fast. But this raises a fascinating question. If a single airline managed to resurrect an aircraft that the entire world had declared dead, did the A380 really die? Or are we witnessing the birth of a new aviation model where passion and strategic vision can overcome the most conservative financial spreadsheets? Perhaps the real story of the A380 is just beginning. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video, leave your like.